Hi guys, I've got Gavin Bath here with us today. He's going to show us a pretty cool um, workflow that he's conjured up with iLogic and uh, Inventor. So um, I'll hand it over to you, Gavin. You can uh, tell us a bit about the, the, the history and how you came to this and, uh, and how it all works. Yeah, sure. So I'd been chatting to a colleague of mine, Peter Crawley, and he was talking, we'd been sort of fiddling around with Excel and iLogic and the two talking together. And he had mentioned to me how dynamically Excel can be updated uh, when manipulating an inventor model. So I thought I'd play around with this idea a little bit. And together we came up with a bit of a hypothetical problem, which was a tank of pancake batter. And we're going to tip this tank of pancake batter out. So obviously that, that problem, we need a way of tipping the tank over. So... If you imagine that there's a big electric motor and possibly a gearbox sitting on the end of the shaft, we're going to need to provide some torque to tip that tank over. Now as it tips the liquid out, the mass is going to change and obviously that centre of mass is going to move. So using some basic eye logic and a bit of modelling, we represented the problem and you can see there that the, the center of mass dynamically updates as we tip the liquid out. That's amazing. So uh, you see, this is going to be like the world's biggest pancake. Absolutely. Heston asked us to do this for him. Right. Yeah. Man. Okay, so now, now that we've got the, the model represented, we want to do some calcs. We want to work out what torque are we going to need at every stage during the tipping cycle. Now, using older workflows, uh, maybe Excel and Inventor talking to each other, well, it was more of a one-way where you would do your calcs in Excel and then send the data through to the inventor model. It'd be nice if that was a little bit more dynamic. So we can see as that center of mass moves in its crazy sort of path, what's happening to the torque. So, so, so normally the Excel spreadsheet and inventor are completely independent of one another and you're just passing numbers between the two and running the calculations. And yeah, exactly. It's, it's just a one-way link. It's just another source for the parameters. But what we've got here is iLogic actually sending data to Excel and receiving data back. So you can see now that what I've done is taken the mass, which is changing dynamically as we tip it, and the offset of the center of mass from the pivot point in the horizontal direction. So with that mass and that offset, we can use Excel to very quickly calculate the current moment or the torque that's required at that pivot point. And we just completely ignored an inertia for this problem just to keep it simple. So just assume that it's going very, very slowly. But the bit that blew me away when I tried this out is as I tip it over, you'll see that the Excel data dynamically updates real time. Yeah. That's really impressive. So um, I, you've got the colours there as well, which is a really nice visual way of um, giving feedback to the designer of how the, um, how the layout's performing. So how have you done that? So this is the key thing, really. I mean, for digital prototyping, you want the design and the calculation to be as closely related as possible so that you're not working in this big cycle where you do some calcs, put your numbers back into your model, which determine the geometry, but that then changes the problem and you've got to go back and recalculate everything. So by doing it this way, the feedback from Excel is, is real time. It allows you to, to see the problem changing live. So all I've done is I've taken the current moment at any point in the cycle and a series of theoretical motor sizes down here. And this percentage of max is basically just motor utilization. So it's how, you know, how, what percentage of the maximum torque um, each one of these motors would be provi providing at any point in the tipping cycle. Okay. So as we, as we adjust it, we can see Obviously, if it's going bright red, it's out of range. Yeah, orange somewhere in the middle, and green's probably being underutilized. But what we can do is we can visually just get it at the point where we've got the most red. So that's sitting somewhere around there. And then what we can do is start to play with the pivot point and adjust the pivot point to get a better or a smaller motor size. So we're, we're optimizing the design real time. Now, I think this can be used in a number of ways. I mean, there's, there's plenty of problems that 
designers and engineers face all the time where it's that backwards and forward cycle of the model changes the problem but the results from the maths determine what the geometry looks like it's kind of pre-optimization uh, optimization as well really because then afterwards you could do sort of design optimization and inventor on that frame probably i think you've just coined a new term scott optimization pre-optimization you heard it here first folks <laughs> All right, well, that's about all I've got to show you for now. Yep, cheers, Gavin, um, and I hope you guys found it useful. Thanks a lot.